Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Dream Wakers Daily Conversation. My name is Erin, and I'm so excited to be joined today by Natalia Gomez Junco. Now, Natalia is a professional soccer player who graduated from Louisiana State University with a degree in civil engineering. She's played soccer in Iceland, Spain, and she's currently playing for the women's national team of Mexico. So, Natalia, it's such a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much for taking the time. No, my pleasure. Thanks for the invite, <laughs> um, So our first question is just, do you think you could elaborate a little bit on what your career and your personal journey has been so far? Yes, well, um, I'm going a little bit further back than what you uh, stated. I basically grew up in Mexico and South America. Uh, I moved around a lot as a kid because of my dad's job. So I got to travel a lot since I was a kid. And I think that... Uh, so I put something in my brain about traveling and I love to travel uh, like right now I travel a lot because of, of soccer but when I was a kid I moved around a lot I got here to Monterrey what, what I call now my home city but it's, it really was my home city until I was 10 years old um, I kept playing soccer here uh, I graduated high school and I decided I wanted to keep playing soccer but uh, I wanted to grow more as a player and as a person. There are some good, very good schools here, very good universities, but the, the level of competition uh, is, is far, I wouldn't say better, but it's just bigger in the U.S., uh, mm -hmm. the college, the college organization there is, and, and there's, there's so many opportunities in the U.S. So I decided to go uh, away from home, and uh, I started out in the University of Memphis, and then I transferred to LSU. And I just wanted to keep playing soccer at a good level, uh, challenge myself. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I could get a degree. Uh, I didn't want to let my, my studies aside. And, you know, because soccer, you never know what, what's going to happen in soccer. Mm -hmm. So I decided I, I also wanted to get that academic part. And I love engineering. I chose civil engineering just because I love to, to understand how things work. I love building things, and yeah, I graduated from LSU almost four years ago now, five years ago now, <laughs> such a long time, um, and yeah, then I decided to, to keep playing soccer as a professional, I got a contract, my first pro team in, in Iceland, I lived there for a couple of years, I loved it, and then I moved to Spain, and then I came back home to Mexico, I live in Monterrey, uh, back in my home city, and I play for a club called Tigres here. Uh, it's a very big club, and and yeah, that's about it's a quick, not so quick summary about my soccer career. <laughs> well, it sounds like you've done a lot just in a few short years, so it's really cool to hear about your journey. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about just what is a day to day for a professional soccer player? Although I'm sure it's very different now that we're all stuck at home. <laughs> Yeah, it's very different now, uh, but usually, I mean, I'm kind of used to this because as a soccer player, um, it seems like we work relatively little, mm -hmm. uh, relatively a short time during the day, and it is true, uh, we just practice maybe two, three hours a day, not much, but uh, you have to take care of everything else around it in order for you to perform on the field. So as a professional, uh, you have to really take care of your nutrition, sleep, uh, anything that has to do with watching tape, watching my own tape, analyzing, uh, thinking, and some days not really thinking too much. You have to really balance it out. Uh, so yeah, it really depends on the day, but usually I wake up, I go to practice. Uh, we train here at 8 a.m., so I usually wake up before 7, 6.37, uh, walk my dog out, mm -hmm. I get ready, I, I, I drive to practice, um, and I get home usually around noon, maybe uh, one in the afternoon. I have my lunch. Sometimes I take a nap. And in the afternoon, sometimes I do an extra session. Uh, if we're in season, I try not to do too much. Uh, so I just really rest and, and watching maybe tactical stuff, uh, maybe an interview I have, or maybe you know duties that I have to do with the club uh, outside of the field. And that's about it. I mean. There's not much to it. It's just really taking care of your body, your mind, and your, your soccer in order to perform. And then on game days, well, we travel a lot. We usually travel 
every week or every two weeks. Uh, so we get to be in other cities in Mexico. Uh, and game days are, are usually different. I mean, it's all about game day, getting, getting your mind ready for game day. Awesome. Yeah. And I think it's interesting, actually, that you talk about how much, you know, of the tacticals that you have to watch. It sounds a lot almost like studying for school. Um, so it's yeah, really fun. It's, <laughs> it is fun. I mean, I love that part. I also really love the game. I love the mm -hmm. tactics of it. I know players that don't really watch tape. And I think it, it just works different for different people. I like to be prepared. I like to know what my opponents do, what I can, what I can do to, to beat them, what I can do to do better. But as I, as I told you, like, it's a really delicate thing to not get too much into it. Like your head maybe stuck in it a lot and to be kind of not obsessed, but worrying too much about your opponent. Because mm -hmm. I believe like the, the best you can do is get better yourself in order to, to beat anyone you have to. So it's also that part getting better yourself, but not thinking too much about it. Because then, you know, it can undermine your confidence or, mm -hmm. or I don't know, you just think too much. So it's very delicate. To think, but not to think too much. I think it's one of the most challenging things about being a pro uh, in college. I don't really, I didn't really have time to think. So it was between school and, and game day and everything. Like uh, it was very hectic. Uh, mm -hmm. I had activities all day round. And as a pro, maybe life is slower, and you get to focus almost a hundred percent on on your on yourself, on your career. And it's great. I love it. But it also gets a little bit too much in your head so you have to keep a balance and, and kind of be be I don't know like sometimes just I have maybe one day a week or one day every two weeks where I don't want to think anything about soccer I just disconnect <laughs> don't watch any soccer don't think about soccer like just watch anything else but soccer because it's also it also gets too much sometimes sure sure it's important to take care of yourself um, well, our first community question comes from a fifth grader in Georgia who just wants to know how long have you been playing soccer and what made you want to start playing? Well, I started playing when I was around four. Uh, my dad's family is very, very, a very soccer family. Uh, in Mexico, soccer is a huge part of our culture. Mm -hmm. And my dad's family is like the standard of <laughs> soccer uh, fanatics, in, not fanatics, I don't really like that word, but just mm -hmm. soccer people, you know, and my my uncle, actually my dad's brother, he, he used to be a, a professional player uh, back in the day, in the, in the 80s, now he's a, he works at ESPN, he's a, 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 an analyst, sports analyst, and so everyone's just super involved, so I think I just got home one day from kindergarten, I told my mom I wanted to play soccer. I have no idea where that idea came from. I think it was because I, I used to watch my dad watch soccer every weekend. I think it comes somewhere around like that background. But yeah, since since the age of four. Wow, that's really great. <laughs> um, are there any kind of like I don't know inspiring people or role models that you really look up to that play soccer or help inspire you? Uh well. Yes, right now there's a lot of soccer players I admire. Uh, I remember when I was very like a child, when I was like around that age, four, maybe seven, eight years old, there wasn't a professional league in Mexico, so it was hard to look up to any any uh, any woman that played soccer. Uh, back in, at, in that day, I, I really liked Mia Hamm uh, in the you know nineties. Um, I really liked some some guy players from Mexico, Luis Hernandez, the Matador, he used to wear like a headband. <laughs> I had his, I had different types of people I admired, but I didn't really have anyone from Mexico because it didn't exist as a, as a profession in Mexico. Mm -hmm. There was one girl that used to play, that I later got to play with her in the national team, uh, Maribel Dominguez, and she was like the, the icon uh, in women's soccer for many, many years. She, she played in, in Europe, and it's just she, she's a coach now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it changes time to time. Now I just admire uh, soccer players also because of their quality, and, and you look at other aspects of their game and you try to learn those things. That's amazing. <laughs> Um, so our next question is more about college and school. So as you alluded to, sometimes for student athletes, it's 
kind of a tough decision. They sometimes just want to go straight into playing a sport and they don't go to college. Um, sometimes they do because they kind of want that backup plan. So can you tell us a little bit about your decision to go to college and to pursue civil engineering? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone is in a different situation, in a different position. I think men's sports, well, at least in Mexico, men's, sport, men's soccer and, and women's soccer is very, very different. Back in the day, there was a pro league when I finished high school. And so there wasn't really an option for me to play pro unless I looked up to uh, playing overseas, which was tough at that age. Mm -hmm. Didn't really, you know, I, I'd never left my parents. Um, so I, I think it wasn't a hard decision for me to go to stu study college. I understand like there's, and I know a lot of, of men soccer players that don't really study university, don't even graduate maybe from high school because they have to, you know, play pro and, and it's so competitive and, and here they start at such a young age, like 10 years old and they're already like in the, in the lower divisions. And it's tough, I mean, they, they really don't have maybe the time or, or the, you know, or the, how do you say, like they, they can't make it to class and to practice, mm -hmm. like their parents can't take them, they have to, it's tough, you know, they have to travel maybe two, three hours to get a practice. Mm -hmm. So I understand it's very, very different for for everyone, for me, I, I had the opportunity and I had very supporting parents and I was very, very lucky. And without them, I wouldn't be here today. And they always supported me, like, yeah, if you want to go play abroad, like, go ahead. If you want to go to college, go ahead. Um, I, I really remember this talk I had with my mom. I was sitting down my senior year. I had already, think, visited Memphis. I had visited a school in California. And I was about to make the decision, should I, should I stay or should I go? And I was really, obviously, scared. I was very anxious. I was couldn't sleep. I, 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 I really struggled as a kid or as a teenager to leave home. You know, mm -hmm. if, if I had to leave my parents for a couple of days, which I had to for for national team and U seventeen uh, camps, I really, really struggled. It was very, very hard. I felt really homesick, anxious, and so I was like, oh man, if I struggle for four days to go to the, to camps. It, Mexico City, how will I be away for four years? Like, I, I cannot even picture it. Like, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to make it. And so my, my mom told me, look, like, you can leave and just uh, try it out. And if you don't like it, you can always come back home. I mean, you can leave for a year or for a semester. If you, you cannot stand it, you just come back home. And I was like, yeah, you're, I mean, you're totally right. I mean, there's really nothing I, I got to lose. And so I was really lucky in that part. Like, my, my parents were always very supportive. Um, I got a scholarship to go to the U.S. And I also felt that responsibility, you know, I, I need to take advantage of it as well. And and I left with that mentality. Like, um, I have really nothing to lose. I It's going to be great. And I loved it. I mean, first minute I got to Memphis, I really liked it. Everything that... Is as a student athlete in the U.S., I think some players take it for granted. Maybe it helped me coming from Mexico, which is really, really different, the economic support we have here. Um, there, there's just not that much support for sports here, in general, as, as at the university level and at the pro level. And so I got there and I was just really amazed at all the facilities they had and all the support, all the year, all the, the you know, the, the treatment they gave to student athletes, it was just, it was shocking for me, it was, it was completely new. Yeah, yeah, well that's actually a really, really great transition into our next question, which comes from a 12th grader in Ohio who wants to know, what's it like moving away from your home country to all of these places with different cultures, was it exciting, was it difficult, what was your experience? <laughs> yeah, definitely, I mean, as a kid, I, I got used to traveling, and it come two years at one country or one city, I would ask my parents, like, yeah, what's next now? Like, let's move on. I don't know if, it, if right now it's a good or a, or a bad thing, so I always want to be on the move, but um, it's definitely hard at first. Anything, well, at least I can talk from my experience, my opinion, any change is different just because we're not used to it. Uh, you're, you get used to certain things, and then you move, and your whole world changes. Um, even now, the thing we're living right now with this whole pandemic, I think it, it's a change and it's very stressful. And well, 
add in the, the uncertainty and everything that goes along with it. But traveling and, and moving to another place, it's, it, it's new and, and sometimes it's, it's uncertain. And, um, but I love it. I mean, once you get used to it and you, you uh, kind of go through that barrier of, of, of figuring stuff out and, and being someplace new, once you get through that, I, I describe it like, you know, you, you, you're kind of low and then you jump back up and, and you jump higher and you, you grow as a person. And, and each time you start learning new things, you grow and grow. Um, and I mean, all in the soccer aspect, yes, but mostly in the human aspect. You, you, you learn everything. Uh, you, you figure stuff by your, on your own and, and, you, and, and you discover new cultures. Uh, like... Um, just little things. I, I thought Mexico and the U.S. were going to be kind of similar because we're so close. No, it couldn't be. It couldn't be more different. It's very, very different culture, and you kind of at first you're like, "Well, this is this is wrong," or maybe this way of thinking is weird or wrong. But then you learn, no, like, it's just different from what you're used to. And with that, everything. I mean, Iceland was a whole new thing, and and you kind of learn positives maybe of that culture and, and you also appreciate what, what you had at, at Mexico we have we have stuff that that there's nowhere to be found in, in where I've lived. And same as the US, I mean it has things that are unique to the US and just like that you start learning different things. It opens your mind up. It opens your mind to everything new from soccer skills, soccer ways of training techniques to like just ways of eating or ways of thinking, ways of of going about life, it's I couldn't describe it. I mean, I think it's it's the best thing you get from traveling and, and traveling with that mindset of really opening up and, and getting to know a culture. I mean, I recommend it to anyone who asks me. Like, you can go live somewhere else. Maybe if it's just a different city, maybe different uh, country, different continent. I would recommend it. I think it gives you so many things uh, added to your life and you experience it. I love that. I love that advice. I hope that everyone gets to travel and see and experience different cultures. I think it's really important. Um, our next question is coming from a high schooler in D.C. who wants to know, in the future, when you can't continue to play professional soccer, do you have any dreams in mind or what you're going to pursue? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I read it and I was like, oh, that's a great question because it's been in the back of my mind for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. um, I think, well, at least I was always used to knowing what's next. You know, you finish middle school, you know, high school's next. You finish it and you know college is next. And when I finished college, I had to make the decision. Well, I, I know I want to keep playing. Like, nobody ever teaches you how to go about things, maybe. Uh, so you finish and you're like, okay, so what's next? Like, how, what, what's a step-by-step -step process or what should I do? There's no step-by-step -step process uh, outside of school. So you have to kind of figure things out. I decided to be a pro, and I know this is not going to be forever. So uh, I know it's you know it's going to come to an end, and I start thinking about the future. And I just I don't know. I want to do so many things. Really, uh, I love soccer. I love uh, coaching. I've I've coached uh, youth teams. Uh, I've coached kids, and I really love that part of the game of teaching because it's a whole new different perspective of living like soccer, of, of learning from soccer and I've learned as a person a lot from coaching. So I think that's one of the things I would want to do. Um, I really want to help uh, soccer be a better, uh, be better in my country because I see so much talent, so much potential. Um, so I want to build an academy, hopefully maybe uh, something online to help people develop their skill, um, to have a little bit more structure or infrastructure here in Mexico, because we're, we're a little bit behind in that area. Um, and, and, you know, I see pl uh, places like the U.S. where there's so many tools and, and, and kids get educated in their athletic aspects since they're so young. We don't have that in Mexico. We just play in the streets, play everywhere, play in the park, play. It's just soccer, just playing, but there's no really an education. So I, I kind of want to go along those lines. Um, I want to open up my business as well. I really like food and cooking. I want to open up somewhere around that. So I, I just have so many things in my head. Uh, I know I'll have time for that 
and in the future, I mean, I also love engineering. I don't know if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do anything along those lines, but maybe helping build uh, fields, you know, uh, little fields for people to play, and maybe small fields in, in rural areas for people to play soccer. So I believe it's just such an important part in someone's life to just experience sport, even if you're not gonna be a pro. Just it, it gets you out of your house, make friends. You, the, the health benefits, the, the the psychological benefits. I don't know. There's just so many things around the sport that I've I've had this for 20 plus years in my life, and I just believe in it so much. Just not just the professional part, but everything that comes around with it. So I think it's somewhere along those lines. So those all sound great. So I know we're excited to see wherever you end up in the future. Um, our next question comes from a sixth grader in New Mexico who wants to know what was the biggest obstacle you ever faced and how did you overcome it? Wow, that's a great question. Let me just connect this because <laughs> I think I'm running low on battery. Sounds good. <laughs> connect. Wow, uh, biggest obstacle. <laughs> well, there are so many. Um, Definitely one was leaving home to play, uh, starting out in camps, uh, the national team. Uh, I was maybe 14, 15 years old when they first called me to camp. It was in Mexico City. I had to fly there, leave home for a couple of days. And that really, that was a struggle. It was a struggle for years. And I decided to leave it for a while because I couldn't take it anymore. And then I, I, I grew a little bit more and I got more mature. And so I, I decided to go back or they pulled me back. That was definitely my first like big, big struggle in soccer. Um, next up, uh, college. I mean, college, there's just so many struggles. <laughs> um, I mean, well, I got to Memphis, and, and second year, I, I decided to transfer because I didn't really, I wasn't really growing, maybe, as a, as a soccer player. I wasn't really, you know, developing. So it was a very tough decision. It was a struggle to find another school to go to just the uncertainty of it all. Like, I didn't really know what I, what was going to happen. I, I was like, maybe I just have to go back home and, and study at home. Like, I didn't really have anywhere, a plan where to go. And so that was, that was a hard time. Like, it was, I was very, very lucky again to have LSU um, take me in. And I basically, for a year, I couldn't play. I was a, a kind of a red shirt, but because of the transfer, so that, that whole first year at LSU was a struggle because I couldn't play with a team, I couldn't travel, I couldn't... I had to train and I had to work as hard as everyone else, but I couldn't really... I wasn't really part of the team. So that was a tough year. But, I mean, as I, as, as I believe, every, every struggle comes with a price. I mean, when I decided to leave home for camp and it was such a struggle, I think I was later able to go to college and, and be, you know leave home so that was the, the upside and leaving Memphis I, I ended up at L2 and I, I'm really proud of, of, of being an alumni and I, I love the experience there and I think it was a great decision and that whole year I, I had to sit out um, eventually I, I worked my heart off and, and I really uh, earned a spot in the team so by the time I got to play I was I was one of the captains and I was, I had really earned the respect of my teammates and my coaches. I think I, I got to LSU with a mentality of, of this is it, like this is a great chance I have and, and they're, they're betting on me. And after maybe I'm not so good experience at Memphis, um, where I maybe I didn't have the best attitude, I think I changed it around for LSU and I really was more humble. I was more uh, hard worker, a, a more hard worker hardworking player so then after that professional I mean there's a lot of struggles there's there's been months where I don't have a contract where I'm just sitting at home waiting for a phone call for a phone call uh, from a team I've been rejected from teams I had to try out for a team in Germany I was rejected uh, and then I got the, the contract in Spain but I mean there's a lot of struggles that people don't really see I mean I right now I've just been talking about the good stuff maybe but there's just so many things behind it and the day-to-day -day struggles of being a pro, the pressure, the, the people, the, the, the here in Mexico, we, we get a lot of attention from the media. And it could be a good thing, and it, it also sometimes adds up to the pressure, you know? 
of the pressure I put myself in, in my in what I do. I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist, so I, I really like doing thing, things very, very like to the best of my abilities. And the pressure I have from maybe my family indirectly, from from the media, from everything. You know, you, you live on you you play under pressure, which is kind of ironic because it's a game. There shouldn't really be. It's it's a game. You have to have fun. But as a professional, I think it's it's our job. It's our life. It's what I've dedicated my whole life to. So handling that pressure is it's a day to day struggle as well. Added to the uncertainty of 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 soccer itself. I mean, it injury. Right now, I'm injured, for example, and there's injuries. It just happens, and that's uncertainty too. Like, when am I going to be able to get back on the field? When am I going to be able to run? You know, it's it's also a struggle. Sure, sure. It sounds like there is a lot of difficulty, but it also sounds very rewarding. So I'm glad that you get to have the upsides along with the downsides. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> um, so our next question is sort of related. Um, you're an accomplished female athlete, and as you kind of mentioned, it wasn't always easy being a girl interested in sports. There weren't as many opportunities and role models that you could look up to. So do you have any advice for the young women out there who are interested in playing professional sports but might be intimidated or, you know, just turned off by kind of the gender biases that exist? Yeah, definitely. I mean, when I was a kid, South America and then in Mexico, uh, there wasn't any girls' soccer. I used to play with boys since I started. I mean, at, when I started playing at, at four years old, I used to play with boys and I played with boys maybe until the age of 13, 14. So a uh, long time. And in Mexico, maybe it's, it's more of a for men's sport. It's uh, up to this date. And I think it's changing with the professional league. Professional league in Mexico is, this is the third year, I think, of the league. So it's relatively new, but it's, it's changing that mentality. But it's really a men's sport, and so when I used to play, they would say like, "Oh, it's a sport for boys," or "Oh, look, that team has a girl playing," and it kind of like they kind of looked weird at me, or they if I scored a goal, they would get like extra upset just because a girl had scored on them. And um, I just, as a kid, I just remember I loved to play. I didn't really care about playing with boys, girls. Like I didn't really give much thought to it. But I mean, I think my family really helped in that part. Like my mom was always like, "Yeah." Go ahead and play because I know girls that their parents are like, no, like you're not gonna play soccer ever in your life, mm -hmm. or or whatever sport, you know. So that as a kid, having a supporting family is very important. But then uh, when you're maybe a teenager, when you're playing with boys and maybe it's not that hard, or there are some people that are not as mature or open-minded and they will attack, or they will, you know, try to make you feel bad. It, it happens and it happens with gender bias and with cultural bias, with any type of bias, anything that's different, usually people, well not usually, but sometimes people attack and, and they, just because it's different. So that's the, the beauty of traveling, that you get to open your mind at least and, and look at things that are different in another way and, and cultures in a different way. But as a, as, a, as a woman, an athlete, I can just suggest, you know, find something you love to do, uh, if it's sports or something else, just find the joy of doing it for doing it and then you can sometimes it's not that easy but you can find a way to do it and if, if you have to play with boys you have to break down those barriers uh, it's always it's always amazing to see how you start breaking them and how people start uh, uh, respecting you because at the end of the day you have to just do things and, and show people what you are able to do kind of I mean I've had coaches that even coach a boy black lives and then I got to the team and they didn't really know how to coach a girl, and they would tell me, just because of ignorance, I mean, they, they really hadn't explored it in their lives, and they would tell me, like, if you are tired, like, you can sit out there, you can do less repetitions, or you can do, you know, just take it easy, and I, I, I would get kind of upset, and I would be like, no, like, treat me like any other boy, I, I'm able to do it, uh, I understand there's physical differences, I mean, I'm, maybe I wasn't as fast, or, or I you know, as strong as a guy, but I, I can do it. I can definitely do it and, and compete with them as a young player. So later they, and they've become one of my best coaches, you know, and, and they, they understand that part and, and they they just earn the respect and they see like, okay, yeah, a girl can definitely do it. And maybe sometimes a girl is even better at some things than a boy. I mean, I've heard that girls are more, 
have, can, can, be, can concentrate easier and they understand things a little bit faster. And I've had that experience myself with coaching uh, kids. It's just different. I mean, every gender is different and um, it's, a, it's a matter of, of enjoying what you do and finding a way to do it. And you, you're going to take comments from people like all your life in different things. And it's just, you know, knowing that it's their perspective, maybe it's just out of ignorance, out of, you know, I don't know. It's, it's a problem they have with, within themselves. I mean, it's not exactly uh, against you. So it's a great question. I think we're, we're going to face those things in all areas of our lives as we, as we grow older. That's great advice. Thanks for sharing. Um, can you tell us more maybe about the most memorable or most exciting memory that you have during your uh, career as a soccer player? <laughs> um, well, I can, I can think about LSU, like talking about college. Um, when in my senior year, we got to the, the SEC tournament, the conference tournament, I remember that whole week was just great for me. I, I was really enjoying it. It was my last uh, conference tournament with LSU. And I, I just remember enjoying it so much. I played a great tournament. Um, the team did great, even though we, we had some, some struggle at the beginning of the tournament, but we kind of pushed through and we made it to semifinals. We lost 1-0 to A&M, but it was just the whole process of the, of the team was, we, we were all such, uh, such a good team, su such a, like friends and good teammates and we looked out for each other. Just so, so much time spending together during that week, uh, we just kind of grew together. And I remember just enjoying it so, so much and it kind of showed on the field that I was just playing at, at a very high level myself, you know. And I think that's the best the best feeling as an athlete when you when you know you're playing your best and that happens when you're enjoying it and you know and you're kind of enjoyment makes the whole thing easier and you get to focus more and you get to play at your best so that, i think that was my favorite moment uh, from playing uh, in college for sure awesome uh, we have time for one more question so just to wrap up the conversation if you could give one or two pieces of advice to all of the students that are watching, what would those pieces of advice be? Oof, so <laughs> many things. Um, well, so I really believe in, in, in working hard. Um, I've really, I've witnessed players that are very, very talented, but that don't put the work in or don't, don't really want it maybe and so they could have played professional they could have played for a national team but they just you know they just don't not, not necessarily give up but they don't work as hard and it's it's valid I mean I think it's it's very valid for people not to want to be a professional player or to play for a national team not everyone has those aspirations but if you do want to get there I think the most important thing you you need to have is hard work I mean and we really had that discipline at, in college I think they kind of engrave it in your brain but I do think it is it is true I think it, it, I've really seen players that are not very talented even when I was a kid or, or a teenager and then now they're playing in the here in the professional league in Mexico and they're one of the better the best players in the league and I'm like wow this player really grew but it's just because of hard work I mean if you want to get somewhere in sports in your career in school hard work really pays off and it's not very easy to work hard every day even when you're not motivated when you're maybe struggling when you when things aren't going your way it's very very hard to be motivated but if you get through that if you're motivated enough or disciplined enough that's when discipline comes in you're not maybe motivated but you're disciplined to work hard every day i assure you you will accomplish those goals like they, there's no hard work pays off in so many ways so I would recommend that like that's my advice I mean if you really like to do something just work hard and don't let anyone outwork you and second and most important than the first one enjoy like enjoy always uh, whatever you do in 
sports and, and there's going to be days where you don't want to go to practice, where you don't want to work. I mean, me playing as a pro and I love soccer, I, I, it's definitely one of my biggest passions in life. There's some days where I just don't want to do things. I don't want to go to practice. I really don't want to travel again. I really don't want to do those things. And you, know, you just have to do it and try to enjoy maybe most of the days. And, and it's valid to have those days where you're like, I don't want to do this. I think it's totally human. But, you know, try finding enjoyment in doing, in getting better, in working hard, in training. You have to enjoy those things if you are at this level, if you are, if you are going to dedicate your life or, it, or whatever career you're going to, you, you have to learn to enjoy the, the journey. You know, it sounds very like, cliche, but it's true. I mean, you have to enjoy the journey because that's really the rewarding part. At the end, you're going to have to, you're going to get to play and maybe score and win or whatever. But what, what's going to make that so much sweeter is the, how much work you put in and how much, it, how much struggle you have to go through. And the bigger the struggle, the bigger the, bigger the reward you know, that you're going to have at the end. Absolutely. And I think that's great advice for anyone, whether they want to be an athlete, whether they're a student struggling in school, whether they just graduated college. I think that's really applicable to every part of your life. So thank you so much for sharing that. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but I did want to thank you one more time, Natalia, for taking the time to answer all of these questions and share your wisdom with everybody watching been a pleasure to talk to you and for everyone watching at home you can actually tune in to our Facebook live at 1 p.m. every weekday and you can see what some of our other dream speakers are up to and what advice they want to share and if you ever miss one you can watch them on our Facebook page they'll be posted there shortly after they air um, but thank you so much everybody for tuning in and we'll see you next time thank you